We are keeping an eye on your health and registered nurse and health um, writer and Post-Gazette writer. Abby Mackey's here with us again, and this time we're talking about tackling the school year. And I know it's a rough transition for a lot of kids, and you're looking into this, and there's a certain term that I'd never heard of before. It's called after school restraint collapse. That's what right. is this? That's right. So we all know how the early part of the school year goes, right? Maybe there's not as much homework at first. Lessons haven't started. Practice hasn't started. But that honeymoon period is now over. And for some kids, that's resulting in stress. This particular type of stress, these are the kids who do really well during the school day. Teachers may mm -hmm. say there's nothing wrong at all, but when they come home, they're moody, they might be crying at an extreme, they might be melting down or throwing things, and these are all really big red flags that something's going wrong, wrong in their school day that's out of alignment with what they need. So I think a lot of parents are going, yep, seen something of that before. So is this something new or just a new term? So the term is relatively new, a few years old, but the concept is as old as modern society. So if you talk to anybody who's been in the field for a long time, I spoke to Erin Troop, who owns Sprout Center in Brentwood. She's a counselor. She said for the duration of her career, she has been talking with families about this issue and right at this time of year. But the interesting part is this doesn't only only apply to children. This applies to adults too. Well, that's what I was going to say. I mean, any adult could say, well, yeah, I get how they feel. I mean, after a long day of work, you're exhausted. Right, right. And just imagine, maybe you don't have to imagine, you know, cooking dinner after a long day. The kids are talking all at one time. The dogs bark and they just sort <laughs> yes. of snap, right? right? That is no different than what's going on with our kids. Mm -hmm. But as adults, we have advantages. We're better at figuring out when we need a break. We're better at reining in our emotions. But, you know, that's not the case for kids in school. They can't just say I need a break I need to go take five minutes we have that advantage so is that the difference is what what's bringing it out in school yeah so for some kids that loss of control during their day not mm -hmm. being able to control when they eat lunch or you know having to sit as long as they do that really causes a lot of frustration mm -hmm. and they know enough to not show that frustration in school they bottle it all up and so when they see you at the end of the day you're their person who loves them unconditionally, they feel the freedom to let that all go in front of you. So okay. it's a veiled compliment, but that doesn't mean it's easy to <laughs> right. deal with. All right, so let's talk about how to deal with it because we need some advice. What should we do? Yeah, so I spoke to that counselor I mentioned, but also a dietitian from St. Clair Health and an occupational therapist from the Children's Institute, and they generate a lot of good tips for us. A lot of them are in my story, which is live now at postgazette.com, but for Pretty much all of these kids, they need a break after school. They need a gap between school ending and starting something even as simple as homework. And so exactly what that break looks like depends on the type of kid. More on that in my story. But for most of them, they need movement. So the Ooh. family in my story, they had such a good idea. They race their son home every day from oh, the cute. bus stop. He doesn't even realize that's a behavioral intervention, right? Another thing is a lot of these kids are hungry. They mm. haven't eaten for a long time. Maybe they didn't eat a good lunch. So offering a snack that has carbohydrates and protein, short and long acting sources of fuel is a great idea. Wow. And no matter what strategy you use, make sure you're still monitoring it. Um, don't be afraid to pivot, right? It may not work the first time. It's a very complex issue. And if this is something that is still plaguing your family, of course, check in with your pediatrician or check in with a mental health professional. Oh, so much great advice for so many families dealing with this. Thank you, Abby. And you can, we look forward to seeing you, of course, next week again. And you can read this full story and a lot more in the health and wellness section sponsored by UPMC in this Sunday's Pittsburgh Post-Gazette.